Hey, what's going on guys? Oink here, and today we are going into the final license test event. That is the S license. S for Sport Hard. <laughs> I'm just joking, it's S for Super, but actually every single car here is on the Sport Hard tyres, and all five of these tests are full lap tests, so you've got to do a single lap in the required time. And we start off here at Apricot Hill in the Toyota GT86, and we've got to achieve a 148 flat for the gold. Now, the car itself, uh, and by the way, the line there is my previous best, I was 0.2 off on my first try. This is my second try, so hopefully you guys can understand that this is not too difficult. Um, generally using third and fourth through most of these corners, and a lot of a lot of this whole test, in fact, all, all five events, is a lot about accelerator control and really steering the car with the throttle as opposed to your classic sort of brake, turn in, accelerate out, sort of the, the traditional slow and fast out. There's a lot more uh, finesse needed to keep these cars going in a straight line and uh, the fastest way through each corner. Now, the GT86 is very nice to handle in GT6. In GT5, it was a little bit neutral, a little bit stiff. In GT6, it handles beautifully. You may find that if you're using a wheel, you can actually turn the wheel further than you might expect and the car keeps gripping and keeps turning in so really try pushing the car to its limits keep uh, you know if you think you can go no further with the wheel just turn it an extra few degrees and see if you can get the car to turn in just that little bit extra kind of turned in a little bit too late on that one but it didn't matter too much now for this chicane I just kept it in through third kept as much speed as I could on the exit and then for this final one, it's kind of a late turn in there, coming across the yellow lines and just nice and smooth as you shift up into fourth. Of course, you've got to not hit any of cones. If you hit a cone or get more than, I believe, two... If you get three wheels off the track, I think that DQs you. So you've got to have at least two wheels on the track surface. And I finish up with a 146.309, so that clears pretty easily for the gold. And that is one of the easier tests and generally speaking these five tests are difficult not for the time that you need to achieve but more so for the car that you have to drive they're all reasonably difficult with the exception of the toyota now we're at willow springs and it's kind of dusk or dawn i'm not quite sure i don't know where the sun comes up in this part of the world or where well, whatever you get what i mean it's dark <laughs> I've actually increased the brightness on this video so you guys can see a little bit better, but at least for me it was dark as hell, very difficult to see where you're going, even with the headlights on. Uh, and again, this is a very big um, sort of throttle control exercise. If you pay attention to my throttle meter there at the bottom, you'll notice that I'm using a lot of sort of on and off throttle or like halfway, that sort of thing, and you ri with this car particularly, you can just literally steer the car with your foot like I mean it's it's quite a weird sensation if you're not used to it and maybe if, if you're using a controller it might be a little bit uh, difficult to feel but the car has has quite a lot of grip on the sport hard and a lot of power but it does get the rear end out quite easily it's very easy to put sideways and for that reason it's really crucial that you sort of know when and when not to be on the power off the power that sort of thing and to be able to really uh, control the car with your with your accelerator as opposed to just, as I said before, the sort of more traditional slow and fast out method. Um, the last corner deceptively tightens right at the last, so make sure you just uh, go a little bit slower for there. And it's, the car's pretty powerful, so don't worry if you get a slightly poor X out of there because you've got a good amount of uh, horsepower there to accelerate down the final straight. That brings me a 125.765. You'll need a 127.8 to secure the gold there. Number three, we are at the um, Silverstone Stowe circuit, which is the little inside ring, and we're in the uh, Crossbow R, so this is the more powerful of the two uh, KTM crossbows. The car is very middle heavy, it's, I believe, with the MR layout, and the thing just loves to rotate around the center axis. So, the thing is, when you're uh, coming off the brakes, the car will rotate. When you're coming on the gas, the car will rotate. And when you're mid-corner, you'll probably, or maybe somewhere around mid to late corner, you'll find the car understeers a little bit. So, 
this is again all about getting used to how the car handles uh, this is kind of as I was saying before just running off the grass there but managed to keep it in um, with all of these it is really about understanding each of the cars and how to handle them best with this one I'm using the kind of the fact that it really just turns like mad uh, to my advantage braking quite late coming off the brakes letting the car swivel into the corner and then back on the gas and just controlling it in a sort of gentle power slide through the corner at Stowe we got a 55.217 for the gold uh, and it's a 57.3 that you need to secure it. We can move on to number 4 which has us in a Lamborghini Aventador going around the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. The car's a monster, it's got a massive amount of horsepower but it also handles pretty nicely. Um, don't be caught out by the fact that a couple of the corners here can induce understeer, especially this first corner. Make sure you're hitting this one nicely on the apex, braking, and uh, the car goes a little bit sideways, but I just power on through and the car settles nicely. Handles pretty good. Coming up the hill there, you want to brake quite early, otherwise you will get sent out the top. And again, back on the power as quickly as possible. Um, you kind of want to turn in earlier than you think. Um, when you see a corner, the kind of consider where you would normally think to turn in with maybe a slightly less powerful car. I'm turning like five meters before that, and you'll find that you'll uh, you'll end up in a good position. I also found braking early was quite helpful. Getting the speed down before the corner entry was more important than trying to keep speed through the apex. So I was kind of braking early getting the cornering done and then because it's got a lot of power then as soon as you're clear and you know you can get out of the corner then back on the gas and use all of that power to really uh, sort of explode out of the corners. Missed the apex coming around here and these will take a bit of practice you really especially this one which is a blind entry really difficult to get all three of those right handers just spot on. Um, and again just missing the apex on that left hander but you'll see that it wasn't necessary um, more important to get the lap complete than to get that perfect lap so just uh, keep doing laps if you're a little bit too slow just keep you know securing the lap and seeing where you were slower and then trying to improve on that and you should find the lap comes eventually I got a 132.066 and you need a 134.5 so with all of these you can see coming in with several seconds to spare the main importance is getting the car under control and understanding where and where you can't, well, where you can and where you can't push the car to the limits. Um, and that's more important than trying to get that perfect lap because, as as you can see, I'm getting in by several seconds each time. The final test, then, this is the final license test you shall probably ever see in GT6, is in the Bugatti at Ascari. Very difficult car and a difficult track as well. For the chicanes, you can see I pretty much just skip right across the middle. Pre don't think of them as chicanes, think of them as just like a wiggle in the track. Like, they, you don't have to go around them. As long as you keep like one or two tires on that grey bit, you can just go straight across. So I'm just dabbing the brakes for those and cutting them. The rest of the time, the car understeers like crazy, but you've got to remember that the Bugatti's got like somewhere in the region of a thousand horsepower. This car's speed comes in a straight line and not in the corners. So again, similar with the Lamborghini, you want to get the corner out the way and done, then just back on the power and just explode out of the corners. So exit speed is quite important, entry speed less so. Make sure you get your braking done and again, similar to the Aventador, turn in like 20 meters before you think you need to turn in going really wide there I think it was even one wheel on the track so maybe it's only one wheel you need to keep yourself in the green but very close to the edge on the understeer on that one this track is ex extremely difficult and there are several corners which you can't really see the entry or the exit of so it's definitely not an easy combo and one that may take a little while of practice um, but as I said importance is get your braking done early Get your steering done early, turn in very early compared to what you might normally think. And then once you're clear of the corner, once you know that you can put the throttle down without understeering way wide, then back on the gas full power and get maximum speed on the exit. For the most part, I didn't really know this track very well, and you'll see that it's kind of a sloppy lap, like it's not very clean, it's not like altogether as good as... I'm sure I could have done. Um, I think this was only, you know, within 10 tries or something like, for the most part, I hadn't even done the second half of this track or something, so I was kind of doing it by ear. 
and I came in four seconds, nearly three and a half seconds under the gold time. So, again, as I've said before, much more important to get the car around the track than to, than to sort of focus too hard on that perfect lap. Anyway, there's the S license. Be sure to rewind or click the navigational options to go back or forward to the one that you're trying to figure out for completing the license with anything bronze, you whatever, you'll get the um, the little electric thingy mabobber, and for getting them all gold, you get the Audi R8 LMS. So that's the Ultra, or the Super License even, and hope you guys found that video useful. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.